Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at probability and debunking some of the myths and looking at what really is unlikely. So one thing that often confuses people is when we are flipping a coin and we have just flipped it 10 times and gotten 10 heads, a lot of people think that we must be getting a tails next because we just got 10 heads. What are the odds of getting another heads? But actually, it's the same probability of getting a heads and a tails. Think about it. The coin doesn't have a memory of what came before. The coin just knows that it's got its 50-50 chance of getting heads or tails. So, even if you've had a whole streak of 100, 1,000 heads, you're still just as likely to get heads or tails on the 101st. A lot of people when they're choosing lottery tickets will often stick with the same number because they feel like it's a moving target. Like if you're lost in the woods and someone's looking for you, you're supposed to stay where you are, right? Because then you're two moving targets. And if someone has already looked in a certain spot, they're not likely to go back to that place because they've already looked for you there and they're expecting you to stay in the same place. Well, the same logic doesn't apply to lottery tickets. If you choose the number 11111 and you choose it again the next time, you're just as likely to win the lottery both times. Even if you chose the number that won the lottery last time, you're still just as likely to win the lottery this time. Because, again, coins, dice, whatever, they don't have memories. The lottery, it doesn't remember, if it's a fair lottery, it doesn't remember what number just won. So you're still just as likely to win with the same winning number as last time. Has something really unlikely ever happened to you? Or like you've said, what are the chances of that? That's got to be a one in a million. Well, is that really so unlikely? Let's take a look at this. So the chances of a one in a million event happening to you may be small. But when you take into account all the people there are in the world, a lot of one in a million events happen every day. In America alone, it's estimated around 295 one in a million events happen every day. So what does a one in a million event look like? Well, the chances of becoming, say, a movie star is about one in 1.5 million. And surprisingly enough, or maybe not, the chances of being an astronaut is actually much far lower, around one in 12 million. So most of the probabilities that we've talked about so far have been what's called independent, where the probability of a future event isn't affected by previous events. For example, when we were talking about a coin, the probability of uh, getting a heads in the future didn't at all matter based on how many heads you had had in the past. But the movie star and astronaut examples were not quite the same because there are a lot of other factors that go into those two things. So now we're going to talk about what's called dependent probabilities where the probability of a future event does depend on previous events. And this comes up a lot in card games, uh, like blackjack. So the main idea of blackjack is to get your hand to be as close to 21 as possible without going over. So what happens is you're dealt two cards, and you can choose to either hit, which is take another card, or stand, which is just stay where you are. And the idea is to beat the dealer. Um, and the dealer has one card face up and the other is face down. So you don't know what this is. So how does this relate to probability? Well, one method that people have used to gain an advantage over the casinos in this game is called card counting, where you keep track of the number of high cards and low cards that have been played. So this is useful because the more high cards in the deck, the richer it is and the higher chance you are to get closer to 21. So how um, basic card counting works is that when, 
when cards are dealt, say these four cards are dealt, you will keep in your head a mental tally of high cards and low cards. For low cards that are two, three, four, five, six, you will add one to your mental count. And for high cards, like ace, jack, queen, king, you're going to subtract one from the count. And neutral cards, like seven, eight, nine, you just leave it where it is. So the count for these four cards would start at zero, then you would add one for a low card, subtract one for a high card, add one for a low card, and add nothing for a neutral card. And here, you would get an overall count of one. One minus one plus one equals one. And so this is how card counters can use this to tell if the deck is in their favor. And when the count is really high, they will bet high amounts. And when the, card, uh, when the count is low, you're going to bet low amounts. And this is how they can get an advantage over the casinos. But this is very easy to spot by casinos, because they can just tell that you're placing low bets, low bets, and then suddenly a high bet. So what some people have done is created teams and done team card counting, where there are some people at tables that are just keeping track of the count in their head and keeping a mental note, and then always, but always betting low amounts. So it doesn't look suspicious because they're always betting low amounts. And then there's someone else that is just going around to different tables and always betting high amounts. So that doesn't look suspicious either. So the people who are betting low amounts, just keeping track of the count, will um, signal to the others who are walking around placing high bets whenever the count is good. So those people with high, who, who are betting high amounts come to the table with a favorable count and get high winnings. So by doing this, it's much harder for the casinos to detect card counting. That's all for this video. I hope you learned something about probability. And next time you look and see an unlikely event, you say, hey, that's not actually so unlikely. And I'll see you next time.